can go ahead and uh, and start for for now. Uh, my name is Peter Stimela. I'm the Legium Seed Systems Lead in the ADI uh, project. The ADI project is uh, Accelerated Delivery Innovation Initiative. It's a USID uh, funded project together with the, the state uh, government in the, in the US. The project is for is scaling, scaling out uh, different technologies, including uh, soil health, uh, seed systems, legume and, and maize. And the project, the project is imp being implemented in Malawi, Zambia, Tanzania, and Zanzibar. So today you, you are going to hear a bit about what has been happening on the, on the project from the different uh, partners. So this uh, webinar series are there to give a wider audience on what is happening on the, on the project. So the webinars are there every month. We select a, a partner who has something to share so that we can learn from, from each other. So with that brief uh, introduction, this is how the webinar will, will, will run uh, this, this afternoon. I'll just take a few minutes to introduce the, uh, the presenters. Then we'll have the first uh, presentations. The first presentation, which will take about 15 uh, minutes. And the first presentation will be on innovations to support irrigation, climate smart agriculture, and aqua culture among smallholders and medium enterprises. And this presentation will be from the International Water Management uh, Institute. And our presenter for that will be Munyarazi Mutenga. She's an, an economist. She has a wide experience on cost benefit uh, analysis. And she's also interested in climate uh, change. And she has done a lot of work in terms of research, research and development. And she has also looked at market uh, resilience and also sustainable agri agri-food uh, systems. So that is our first uh, our presenter. She's uh, one of the, she's the lead person on the ADI uh, project. And the second uh, presenter will be Jeremiah Sigale. She has been, he has been working on a, on a, uh, has been working for Walvech for the past uh, for the past eight years. Is the technical lead on the ADI uh, project, and has been very instrumental in terms of promoting horticultural uh, crops in Tanzania, Zanzibar, and other areas. He works for Wal Veg, which is World uh, Vegetable. Uh, center that is based in uh, in in Taiwan, and he has a master's degree from one of the Swedish uh, universities, and he has also very much interested in the development uh, work. And with those uh, few remarks, we will invite our our first uh, presenter. So basically, we'll let the two presenters uh, to present, and then we'll just have a two minutes recap, and then we'll open up for, for discussions after the two uh, presentations. Thank you very much. And I think we can now give uh, Monia uh, to, to give the presentation. And kindly mute for now while 
Monia is giving her presentation. And thank you very much for accepting to give us the presentation. Thank you. Okay, Monia, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Peter, for the introduction. Um, I'll be presenting on behalf of EME team uh, on the acceleration of um, climate smart, bundled climate smart uh, information services and climate smart technologies. Uh, we do that through partnerships. So I'll give you a brief um, a brief overview overview of our partnerships, the outcomes, the achievement up to date, and our key lessons that we have learned. Uh, so this is, um, you know, me, one of its key components is irrigation, irrigation, solar irrigation. So in ETI, our main objectives are uh, strengthening inclusive seeds and climate smart innovation market and last mile delivery through uh, food system accelerators in Zambia. Then the second object, the second objective is strengthening sustainable advisory services. So those are the key objectives that we are contributing to. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so in this partnership, we use a partnership model. Uh, we bundle innovations, we bundle our uh, partners. So in our bundling, we have got 12 different agribusiness partners, and we are focusing on four key value chains, that is maize, legumes, aquaculture, and horticulture. Uh, so in this, we bundle partners like um, across the value chain. Let's say it's integrated aquaculture and agriculture. So we look at the whole value chain from the production of fingerlings until you sell uh, fish and fish is available on uh, different uh, households for to the consumers. If it's uh, legumes, um, legumes, we also look at the different uh, value chain. The farm business uh, advises that aggregates seed, um, seed, and also aggregate the outputs for the market. So that's how that's our delivery system. So we use inclusive business models to deliver bundled climate smart. Uh, agricultural innovations and climate information services. Also, this also in, involves improving access to irrigation equipment, uh, access to affordable finance and market access for the different commodities that smallholder farmers are producing. As you know, um, it's either we have uh, in our scaling model, either we are pushing through a technology, through a technology a pull approach, or we are using a market incentive approach to pull, to, to drive the technology, to scale up the technology uh, within the different agroecological regions. Uh, so we currently, in year one, we were working with three bundles. In year two, uh, if everything goes through, uh, we'll be we're working with five bundles. So in year one, we have, we had bundle one, the sustainable finance for off-grid solar irrigation and advisory partnerships. So it, it was composed of three partners, Lupia, Limalins, and Vitalite. So this was financing off-grid solar irrigation through digital financing model and one-stop shop that offers farmers with or with uh, tailor-made irrigation equipment. So Lupia was the financer uh, for irrigation equipment. Vitalite was the supplier of irrigation equipment. Lupia came up with a credit score that is very that is gender sensitive. That is takes into that takes care of um, the needs of women and youths. Uh, it was also socially inclusive, looking at your looking at um, whether you have collateral or no collateral, are you able to uh, produce to meet the market needs and be able to pay for your credit. Uh, Vitalite was providing um, some one size fits all pounds for the irrigation equipment, uh, mainly to the, mainly in central Lusaka, Southern and Northern uh, province. Uh, so for bundle one, um, we had Lima Links also uh, providing extension advisory services to the smallholder farmers on e e information on whether 
uh, information on markets or insurance access, agricultural insurance access. So um, Lima Links had a, a digital you know, a digital platform where they were providing and updating farmers with uh, the necessary information. Bundle two, which is integrated aquaculture system, um, mainly in the in Luapula and Northern Province. It had seven partners. Uh, that was Unimos, uh, Casacalabre, Casama Arts, Triple Blessing, uh, Adesca, Hopeways. These um, were all dotted across the agriculture value chain. They were integrating agriculture with agriculture and um, with agriculture, with horticultural production or with thermal production. So we had two off takers of fish and um, one of taker of agricultural products, uh, particularly soya bean, maize, uh, Unimos Investments uh, does, uh, does two activities upstream and downstream. Uh, in the mid, uh, upstream and downstream, they produce table sized fish for the market and also they produce uh, different uh, porridges, cereal porridge for the market. And they also have partnered with them. Minister of Health to provide nutritious porridge from soya bean, maize, ground nuts, powder for different health institutions. Uh, Kasakalabwe Cooperative, uh, Mouth Purpose Cooperative pro produces fingerlings for tilapia fish and catfish. Uh, then we have Hopeways also producing um, tilapia fish, um, fingerlings, the, the, so that's the seed in fish production. Then they also, all these um, Unimos, Kasakalabwe, Kasama, Adeska, uh, they provide extension services to new, to our smallholder farmers. Unimos, Kasakalabwe, Unimos, Kasakalabwe, Hopeways, they provide extension knowledge on the management and production of fish. Then uh, whilst Adeska looks at feed management and also seed uh, for different crops that are produced in uh, Northern and Lower Polar Province. Uh, we have Triple Blessing. It's also, it also sells feed, seed as well as, but their main role is to provide, um, to, is to provide, uh, to act as an off taker buying fish, for the market and distributing through various channels. Then Kasama Arts brings all these partners uh, by linking and disseminating the different messages regarding climate resilience, regarding our culture and agricultural systems through drama and arts, through radios, television, and road shows. So those are the partners for integrated agriculture. In that, we also work with World Fish, which is also one of the CG centers supporting these partners, and which also formed this, um, helped uh, consolidate and uh, form this partnership. I'll talk about the successes and challenges of partnership, um, bundling partners later in my discussion. Then we have got our last bundle that we're working with, which is addressing drought um, through climate smart seed and bioorganic fertilizer. And they had these are the partners. Uh, they had six partners. Uh, we had Agova, which was the like uh, the the one that was holding all these um, partners together and doing the monitoring, evaluation, reporting on behalf of the uh, partners. Then Cotiva, we the main supplier and uh, of um, legume and maize, drought tolerant seed, plant catalyst supply, um, supplying the plant catalyst by organic fed, by, by organic fertilizer, or some people you can call it um, a catalyst that helps utilize nutrients in the soil uh, more efficiently and also helping reducing the impact of drought. Then we had uh, Zambia Agricultural Research Institute also demonstrating some of the technologies. We had IDE, uh, one of the uh, one of the non-governmental uh, organizations that was bringing all these partners together, demonstrating and also working with farmers to adopt some of the technologies and also offering some support in terms of farmer business. Um, farm business advisory services and 
downstream and upstream. So they will train farmers to be aggregators of inputs and aggregators of outputs. They were also offering some off-season uh, enterprises for farmers, particularly solar irrigation, solar drip irrigation to farmers so that there's con constant flow of income and the farmers are able to come back to uh, farming in the rain season with all the inputs. The other added advantage they were adding to this bundle was they were also uh, linking the farmers with insurance, um, the weather-based index insurance companies so that in the event of any risks, uh, a drought or floods, farmers are able to recover or get something from the insurance and be able to be on food and be able to purchase drought uh, torrent climate, uh, drought torrent as uh, maize legume feed. Uh, then from our strength, from our one of our objective was strengthening uh, sustainable extension advisory lessons. So in this we had a workshop with all with um various representative uh, extension and advisory actors, both from public and private sector. We also had an agreement with Winrock, which is also sponsored by USID, to look at, to do a landscape analysis of the current status of extension and advisor services and possible linkages. These are our results. We found that there's a pluralistic exchange and approach and delivery, but the key um, challenges are that private sector, uh, the private sector narrowly focused, and our private sector is narrowly focused and inefficient in coordination in that um, we tend to have some duplications um, in terms of private sector exchange and advisory where we have got um, same organizations, NGOs, private sector in one region like Eastern province doing the same thing in the same community and this leads to inefficiency in, co inefficiency in terms of resource utilization. With the public sector from the discussion, um, the participants highlighted that the public sector exchanging offices are overburdened by uh, the farm input support program administration. So they have less time to invest in other activities. So their um, suggestion or recommendation was that if government could, and their new CASA program could, outsource the FISI program to private sector, and then let the exchange and focus on their role as an agricultural exchange and advisory. Then it would create a more efficient system for scaling uh, agricultural technologies. Um, the lessons from the bundling and the bundling uh, of partners, the bundling of technologies that we learn. Um, one of the key was that Yes, it is important to bundle partners and bundle uh, technologies. Like in our bundle three, we have got the summer production. We have got drought and seed insurance, um, drought and seed insurance, organic fertilizer, and also off takers of maize legume, uh, maize legume grain. And in that, farmers are able to. Uh, to 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 get to reduce transaction cost or to to reduce the cost of doing business and also farmers can choose the different technologies CSA technologies they want and also like one of the partners was providing climate information services to farmers through at the lead farmer and farm business approach so in this farmers can access and share information uh, that will help them adopt uh, climate. Uh, smart innovations. Um, the other thing was importance of bundling partners. In terms of partners, particularly in the private sector, they specialize in one key component or in production of specific seeds. So if they are grouped with other service providers, they tend to work more efficiently and they, demo they demonstrate technologies that are combined, that are bundled and farmers can select and see the visibility of the uh, benefits. Uh, one other key thing was participatory design of, and co-implementation of project activities, which helped to, to strengthen partnership and to and led to transparency and efficient allocation. When uh, partners co-develop 
their project activities together, taking into consideration the gender aspects and cultural norms. It tends to be socially inclusive and they come up with products that relate more to their agro to their landscapes. Uh, whether it's extension, whether it's the different climate smart technologies they are offering in, in an integrated way, it tends to speak to the needs of the farmers if they co-design and co-implement. Um, yeah, please, you have a you have few minutes. I'm winding off, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the other thing was um, collaborating uh, with key stakeholders, both private and uh, public extension also helps scale climate smart technologies. For aquaculture, they uh, were collaborating with government extension through the Department of Community and social services, and also the Minister of Agriculture. This also helped the or helped scale the technology and create visibility, sustainability, and accountability of the scaling strategy. On the management side, we found out that um, as a coordinating institute, it is key to have uh, regular meetings with all our partners, see, check their progress. Without that, you wouldn't see where they are struggling, where they need support. But what we learned is not all partnerships work smoothly. Some, they work individually and report together, but there's need for those that were working um, together, either there was a mediator holding them together or they had been working together in the same value chain for more than five years. Uh, thank you. That's my presentation. Okay, Monia, thank you uh, very much. Uh, I don't know, we can take one or two quick questions, although at the end we will have the we'll have a questions and, and discussion. I see somebody has raised their their hands up. Oh, I guess we can continue with the next uh, presentation. Just hold your questions or put your questions on the on the chat. Uh, please, uh, Jeremiah, go ahead and uh, share your presentation. Okay, thank you, Jeremiah. You can go ahead and please put the presentation on the presentation mood. Uh, go ahead and uh, start. Thank you, you have 15 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so my presentation for this afternoon, <clears throat> maybe could be evening to some of the presses in the world. Uh, I'm speaking today on behalf So I'll be providing some updates on the AIDI project, which we are implementing in Zanzibar, and is focusing on innovation for scaling up the health diet seed kits for household nutrition and food security. So under AIDI, I'm working as a technical lead, uh, coordinating the operations in Zanzibar. Welcome to my presentation. Uh, I'll start by providing you a background for Zanzibar, maybe for some of you that you are not very aware of Zanzibar. Uh, Zanzibar is an archipelago in the Indian Ocean, consists of several islands, with the two main ones be Unguja and Pemba. Although in Zanzibar, there is a small islands that are surrounding these two main islands. And many people in Zanzibar, they, they face food security and nutrition challenge which is a key now areas where AIDI is focusing to address. Uh, and this initiative in Zanzibar is aimed to improve food security, nutrition, and overall well-being for household in Zanzibar. And specifically, it focuses on uh, improving nutrition through diet diversification and enhancing accessibility. Uh, I, I'm, um, I want to share with you today, but in a nutshell that uh, AIDI in Zanzibar is working even more than these things that I mentioned, because we are, the first one is uh, soil health and fertility management, 
The second one is to strengthen the horticultural value chain. The third one is the city system, uh, focusing on uh, this informal city system and also semi-formal city system. Uh, and also the last one is for uh, realizing the power of vegetables. The agenda of my presentation today, the last uh, objective. So you can see even here in my map, uh, some part of Zanzibar. You can see we have this main uh, island, uh, many islands, Pemba, and also this one, Unguja. Uh, there is some few numbers that you can maybe hear from Zanzibar, especially for you who are following some other organizations that are dealing with the survey and collecting information. Uh, I saw that this could be interesting also to share with you for the recent survey that was uh, conducted by IPC. It showed that 80% of uh, this kind of uh, Zanzibarian that have been uh, interviewed, they are falling under acute food insecurity, uh, which is IP phase three. And this means that they are urgent need of support uh, and they are in the they are in the group that we call that are people in the emergence. And you can see at the same number of Zanzibarian, 34% of food, 34% uh, of Zanzibarians, they are falling under IP, IPC phase two. That means they require livelihood support. In this case is where also some of beneficial of AIDI are also within this percentage of 24, uh, 34%, sorry. And also if you look on the recent re report from the Minister of Health uh, Zanzibar survey, it indicated that the malnutrition also persists, uh, which is impacting 80, 18% of school age children. And also at the same this 18%, those children also are underweight. And also in that report, they, they also indicated that there's low consumption of vegetables in Zanzibar. So with this information, are the basis that also AIDI is trying to address some of these challenges or providing livelihood support for this uh, household in Zanzibar. As you can see from what we are now doing in Zanzibar in case of health diet syndicate. Uh, so I want to also to show you why this is that cities are important, for example, uh, because could, could be something new to you and you don't know you're asking yourself what is circuit. Uh, when uh, I, I, I think about WedVeg, this is an initiative started by WedVeg some years back. Uh, it used circuit to respond to emergence. It can be nutritional emergence or maybe flood or maybe hunger issues and related cases. So in our case in Sansiba, we are responding to nutrition emergence and we are using the health diet syndicate as a tool to combat this problem. So the health diet syndicate is a package that will contain a variety of nutrient, rich vegetables and legume seeds. So along with leaf set with the production guidelines. That means if we provide one kit to a farmer or household, that means they will receive seeds at the same time. They will receive, we call it, uh, that will help them to guide how to plant and to grow this kind of crop. It includes information like spacing, how to maybe apply manure, fertilizer, and also to control pests and disease. And also, it also provides some knowledge for some of the crop on how to do seed saving. Because you remember this of material we are providing in seed kit, they are open pollinated variety, but a farmer also can save this kind of seeds for the next uh, growing season. So it's also an opportunity for a household to keep this seed for the next uh, growing season or to for maybe for feeding the household. Uh, the seed kit also contain a wide range of vegetables with essential nutrients, including vitamins A, C, iron, calcium. And also this is very important in promoting balanced and diverse diet. So you can see now why we are insisting the diverse, diverse diet, because this is very important. Uh, the, our, our idea is to provide a household with different choices. We know that with some vegetables, 
they vary in nutrient content. So if we include the variety of vegetables per household, that means we are supporting to make sure that this household, they get the nutrient that is required for the well-being. So maybe some of the uh, vegetables, like maybe I give you an example, amaranth, could not have enough folic. But if you go to mung bean, that mung bean has a high amount of folic. Or if you compare the zinc content from mung bean has a, a high amount of zinc if you compare to amaranth. So if you include them at the same, that of fuels to farmers to fight malnutrition. Also, the seed kit also enable community to grow their own food, promoting self-sufficiency and also resilient in meeting nutritional and economic needs. That means also the seed kit is used also in some points also to provide some income to household, depending on their level of how they are going to use the seed kit. So some will end using the vegetables only for home consumption, and some will take an opportunity also for a further step also, maybe also creating kind of selling the surplus to the markets. Also the seed kit is also a, an approach to increase the availability and the accessibility of nutrient rich vegetable seeds. And why we are, we are also under AIDI, this is important because some of this material that we are found in the seed kit, they are not available on the normal, or I can call formal agro shop. Uh, maybe a farmer can go to the agro shop and is looking for uh, grain amaranth, maybe uh, this uh, Achelio Paris, it's difficult to find them, in, especially in Zanzibar. So seed kit is the alternative to make sure this seed is available. And you know that uh, the seed access, access index is very important that we make the seed available to farmers. And the seed Jaraba, you, have the you have five minutes. Yes, I'll go quickly. Yeah, okay. Yes. Is the slide moving? No, it's not moving so far. Okay. Because I can see also in my side they are not moving. But you are hearing me. Yes. I tried to click the escape, but it's not responding. Because I was trying to click the next slide, I don't see them moving. That could be done in the stop here and try it again. Okay. Okay. No, it's not moving. Okay, maybe share and then try to move so we can see. Yes, I've already shared and then I'm moving. Do you see them moving? Switch off your pointer. Okay. Then try to move. Yes, now they are moving. Thank you. Uh, that is very tricky. <laughs> okay. So I'll show you some of the vegetables that we are including in the seed kit. They include the African egg plant, amaranth, leafy grain, African nightshade, Ethiopian mustard, and cowpea. So this in Zanzibar, they include them in different local cuisine like Urojo, which is vegetable meat and stew, and Walinaz with coconut rice, and Mchuzwa Pueza, which is uh, octopus curry. So you can see their unique flavor and texture, they add a taste to the island traditional dish. So you can see that they are also consuming the cowpea leaves, they are consuming the amaranth and African nightshade. So the uh, strategy that we are using to distribute this kit, we are, uh, the, these seed kits, we are using the community-centric approach. That means uh, the distribution through community-driven model in involving local leaders and also households. And also we are using also the approach uh, for uh, targeting the strategic area. In this case, we are using the data from the Ministry of Health 
That's why whatever we do, the syndicate distribution, also we are also distributed together with the people from the Ministry of Health, including the government nutritionists and also doctors, especially on those that the area with the high malnutrition. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example later right, uh, from the small islands that are surrounding Pemba and working with the local uh, NGO. Uh, for in our case, we are working with the Milele Zanzibar Foundation to make sure we reach even the, in the remote areas and we reach so many farmers. Uh, the innovation that I included in the seed kit, the seed kit is integrated with the vegetable varieties bred by the world veg. Uh, this uh, kind of uh, varieties, they high crop yield and nutritional content. And they are being tailored based on the regional preference, climate condition, and also for ex uh, maximum effectiveness. And also, as I said before, we are partnering with the government, agriculture extension system, schools, government and nutrition department, local NGO to establish demo gardens, city kits, you can see in this map, those dots that you see are area where we use also to showcase this kind of material that we are included in the city kits. So for the impact, you can see that uh, for the health diet city kit, we have already distributed uh, 3,000 and 500 city kit. The, and our approach was one city kit for one household. And the one who received the CD kit was the household representative. And most often this one was the women who are preparing uh, food for the family. So these are the one who received the CD kit. In some cases, and then the men also receive CD kit as a representative of the household. And how we, are, we, are, we reach this household, we use the information I said from the Ministry of Health they gave us the um, data on the regions, districts, and village. In Zanzibar, they call it wards, where they high malnutrition cases. So before we distribute seed kit, for example, can say maybe this week we are planning to distribute seed kits. Then they give us the list of people who are maybe they don't have enough for maybe food, and also they cannot afford to buy vegetables every day in the local markets. So these are target people that we are distributing syndicates to them. So you can see from 3,500 uh, in Zanzibar, the one household average is 5.5 household members. So we multiplied this 3,000 and the 500 uh, see, uh, numbers, so five, and then we got 17,500. That means these are household members who benefited from this syndicate. And also we had intervention in the schools where we distribute, distributed foot uh, CD kit. Somebody can ask why you want CD kit because we have different kind of varieties in, inside the CD kit. And you can see for technical parts, one gram of amylans is enough for an acre if you follow our uh, growing practice. So also this initiative is also under AIDI, reached areas with high malnutrition cases, which at the same time had not been reached by most other developing projects. Uh, I could not include here, they are very disturbing, I, could, I cannot share with you. So you can see some people and uh, small children with high malnutrition uh, symptoms that even when you look at your naked eyes, uh, it's very disturbing. You cannot tolerate, tolerate that. So that's why I, I, I'm not including those photos here, but the malnutrition issues is very serious when you go to small islands. So scaling this, I, I have that city in Zanzibar is increased those consumption of diverse nutrient rich vegetables. As uh, you can see that we have started receiving some success stories from farmers. Uh, these are coming from this household that initially they used also to eat maybe only cabbage and, uh, and also the, the, cow, the, the, the cassava leaves. But now they have a plenty of variety to choose what to eat every day. So that is also additional, which is something that was done by AIDI. And community now grow a wide variety of vegetables, uh, increasing di diet uh, diversity and ensure uh, here around the availability of nutritious food. And also there is a yeah, decrease of reliance. <laughs> yes, there is decrease, uh, decrease reliance of external forces. That means the farmers, they don't depend to go and buy uh, these vegetables every day from the market. 
So because they have them at their backyard, they grow themselves and they cook. So for, for this impact, samples from recipient to gather more feedback. I think now uh, after a couple of months, we'll have a very comprehensive feedback to share with partners and also with our donors. So you can see some success story from these farmers. They are selling a surplus to local markets. I said we have people who are just consuming and some also they are selling to local markets. Uh, also, there are some challenges and solutions. The limited access to resources, that means a, a vegetable seed. For sustainability purpose, what World Veg we did, we trained the key farmers to produce seeds for their fellow farmers. That means even the AIDI will phase out, farmers will keep producing seed for their fellow farmers. So this is a sustainability approach for AIDI. And also, also there was a cultural traditional practice that they hinder adoption of vegetables, especially those areas with high malnutrition and small islands. Uh, because most of them, they are fisher, they are doing fishing. So they don't want to engage with vegetables. That's why a lot of malnutrition they are there. And also raising awareness is one of the tools that we used. Um, doing cooking demonstration, teaching them the importance of vegetables. That are things that we are done by uh, under AIDI. So for con uh, concluding my presentation, uh, I'll say that scaling health diet seed kit in Zanzibar is not just about growing crops. It's about cultivating the prosperity wellness and self-sufficiency. They need their own seed to grow for their own family. So uh, relying on buying them every day is not affordable to some of the household. And this initiative is about empowering community, enhancing health, and securing food for vulnerable households in Zanzibar. What I see forward for collaborating if it is needed, especially in the region, uh, in the East Africa region, we have some areas, you know, say maybe in Congo or Rwanda or Burundi, they need also kind of intervention like this. So I still welcome for from partners and donors, give more uh, support and also to expand this intervention to other areas. Okay, thank you very much also for listening. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Jeremiah, for the for the presentation, for that interesting uh, presentation. Uh, now we'll open up to uh, to questions. Uh, I think if you ask a question, you can tell us who you want to address the the question to. Just to recap, we have heard from Dr. Matenje. Munyaradi, the first presentation on irrigation, also in, on aquaculture, the work that they are doing with the different uh, stakeholders and the different approaches that they are using to scale up uh, those uh, technologies and also working with the extension and different uh, companies to to scale those technologies. And the second presentation from uh, Jeremiah, we have heard about the importance of uh, vegetable kits that they distribute to the different partners in, in Zanzibar. And we have heard how they used also the different approaches like using communities and also how they come, they try to improve uh, the seed systems, trying to make it more of a sustainable uh, seed systems once the project is gone and also how they are trying to address the issue of, of malnutrition in, in Zanzibar. So without wasting any more time, I will invite some questions. Please unmute when you, you ask uh, the question and then also just tell us who you are addressing in terms of the, uh, the question. Thank you very much. I think now we'll open up for, for questions. And if you can't, then maybe write your question on the chat where it's a question and answer on, the, on, on Zoom. Thank you very much.
Okay, uh, some people are saying they can't unmute themselves. So let me see if uh, I'm unable to, to unmute. Uh, Christabel, can you unmute most of the, the people? Hello? Uh, no, I'm not able to unmute. Um, Eduardo? Eduardo, could you please help us unmute? Uh, yes, uh, Christabel, we, we can give the, the floor to uh, as long as we are receiving the raise your hands. Okay. So, Peter, as long as we are receiving the raised hands, we, we are able to have more. Okay, those who want to ask, you can raise up your hand. Then I think uh, in the panelists, we have three. So, Eduardo, please, can you attend to the... I think we have three who have... Yes, now they okay, can go ahead, Mashaba. Okay. Thank you, Peter, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you for the presenters. Uh, my question goes to Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah, I'm very much interested with the variety of uh, amaranth that you used in your, in, in your scaling up. C can you please te tell us the name because I'm interested very much with that uh, type of variety. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mulungu. Oh, in terms of variety of amaranth, we have two varieties. The first one is nguruma with the broad leaves, and the second one is a uh, grainy amalans, uh, popular known as akeri, and that target is the household consume the grain. Thank you. Yeah, maybe you can also, uh, I think there's a uh, Jeremiah's email, so probably he can also send you the, the names on the emails of the Amaranthas so that it will be easier for you to, to get hold of it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank I you. I think we'll go on to Jewel. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, congratulations for the presentation. Um, so uh, please speak a little bit loud so we can hear you. So do you hear me? Yes, a little bit, uh, Joel. Can you go ahead? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, congratulations for the presentation from the presenter one and the two from Zanzibar. I think they are good presentation. So for me, I want to ask you for the presenter one, especially in bundle two. Uh, it's about the aquaculture and the fishery as a business. So when did it take the program and how does it cost in terms of USD uh, to finish that project of fish and uh, who funded the program? And the uh, second, on Bandoa, on Bandoa, I think it was about the uh, uh, partners who participated make sure that there is that So far, uh, do you work with any partner who uh, give funds or who offer funds from uh, a company or any other? And what are the collaterals to have that fund? Thank you very much. Okay, Monia, can you go ahead? I don't know if you had the questions very well. Okay. Uh, for the first part on for the bundle two, how does it relate to USID funding? And I hope I got the question well on the seed uh, climate adaptation. Um, for 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 us, we are using diversification. Um, 
of partners, like we are bundling partners, bundling innovations. So we have integrated agriculture and aquaculture. So it means that in instead of relying on uh, agricultural outputs during the rain-fed irrigation, you also have uh, aquaculture is another is another added uh, innovation that you do during the dry period, and this provides income and nutrition for the family. Secondly, for the as I've shown you, we've got bundles. Uh, we have got unimos that is producing. It's an off taker of maize, soya bean, groundnuts, and also some small grain. So it increases production of it. Like we are using market incentive to increase production. So as farmers uh, have got a market to produce, they buy, they are able to buy drought tolerant or climate resilient um, technologies, uh, which enables them to, go, to, 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 to build a resilient farming system. In the other parts where we are, we are also integrating with uh, water culture. So the water that flows off from the fish pond, remember this is in the northern Luapola, where we tend to have excess groundwater at times in one component is also used in horticultural production. Thereby we have diversified incomes and also enabling farmers to build um, their resilient against climate change. Then the second question was on, uh, if I remember well, solar bundle. Uh, solar bundle is uh, about irrigation. We just gave them seed money. We didn't give them, um, like we don't, I don't think we need a collateral. I've not been told from these companies. What I I only know is that for the farmers, they, they really, they have got a monitoring system for them uh, the pump, solar pumps. So if you are producing or using it, they also monitor they get. So they've got terms in which you will produce your commodities and be able to pay your loan. They also look at your at your cash flow before they provide you with e equipment so that they see you are able to um to pay. And they use social safety nets that is your network within a community for you to be to make sure that you are valid a validated uh uh, person to uh, be given uh, credit. I hope I've answered you well. Okay, I think we'll have uh, Dr. Monyo. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. I just want to congratulate Jeremiah for a very nice presentation and commendable job. Um, my follow-up question is, um, you know, this uh, seed distribution is very commendable, and but also a very expensive undertaking, distributing so many kids to people. Um, and we definitely need to make sure we build in some sustainability into the system so that, uh, you know, uh, the good efforts and investment of ADI uh, would, would continue. So what efforts uh, do they have in really engaging the private sector in this undertaking, taking into consideration that they're really dealing with the very vulnerable in the community and their purchasing power may not be so great and yet sustainability uh, to be assured uh, there is really need for the private sector in, uh, engagement and involvement. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, uh, Jeremiah. Thank, thank you, Dr. Monio. Maybe I'll give you background to how we support the private sector and how we link this to AIDI. So we have the program to support the private sector. We have the platform where we call it the giving the uh, private sector, especially the city companies, the breeding lines and the new varieties that we think they can also uh, scale it is for sustainability to reach farmers is a challenge. But still, for some of these crops that we are including in the seed kit, they have not taken by the private sector, but they are highly needed by the small order farmers and households. And the challenge, I'll give you and challenge you, Kibo seed, uh, for example, one variety of uh, amaranth, uh, we call it Madila one, 
uh, is very good, is uh, also more uh, liked by farmers, but the challenge is they produce small seeds. For, for these uh, seed companies, for them to do business on these varieties is not possible, according to their feedback. They said no. And also, this year, open pollinated variety. You know the challenge of doing business on open pollinated variety, that even farmers, they do saving. So that's why those are challenging, but we still also improving and also providing new material every year. And every year, we have a workshop for CD companies, and also we are linking them. For example, from this initiative, we we managed also to introduce one variety of amalans in Zanzibar, which now is being scaled by the East West Sea. This is a, a private company. They are also selling this one. But the challenge now they are facing in Zanzibar that these uh, amalans, farmers, they can grow themselves at, at home. They don't want to buy seeds. So they don't get return on that, uh, that uh, business. So that's a challenge uh, that is a seed company they are facing here. But for those that are uh, varieties that are high value, that they can get a return, that means even their business, they are focusing there. But we have not given up. We are still helping these seed companies. And even if you are also a seed company, we welcome you on September. At World Veg, we'll be having also another workshop for seed companies. Thank you. Peter, can I speak? I'm not hearing anyone. I can see Peter is muted. Yes, please go ahead. Oh, Jeremiah. okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, Jeremiah, thank you very much uh, for the presentation. Yeah, it's really a good presentation. Um, I love the work that you're doing there. Um, I just wanted to ask, so, since you're selecting these vulnerable households, uh, you give them this uh, seed pack, so to say. For some of the vegetables, do they, I, I know you talked about that, you are also training some seed producers uh, who can produce seeds. I don't know if these are village level, maybe you can also elaborate on that. And what is the expected coverage of these? Are these vulnerable households later on able to buy, I'm assuming these, seed producers are going to be selling the seed. Are they able to buy? Do you see any uh, persistence in the production of these vegetables, either by them buying from these seed producers or maybe just by recycling, if they're able to, if some of the vegetables produce seeds, maybe they recycle them. Is there persistence and how long, I don't know if you've noticed how long like it can go for, does it spread from these households that you've targeted to other households within the, the community? Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, uh, maybe because of the time I could not explain how the distribution, because when we provide seed kit, we are also providing training. So because of time, I could not add more information on that. So I'll say that we also provide the training on how to produce the particular seed and how also to save uh, some of the farmers who are very keen and they follow instruction. They can even sell, save the seed up to two years. Uh, but it's not that the seed can be kept in the room after, uh, uh, for two years, no. They'll keep growing and saving, growing and saving. And if you are very good, uh, maybe in searching some articles, you can see also what veg colleagues have been published uh, some uh, uh, feedback from farmers who received the uh, seed kit from World Veggie in uh, around maybe 10 years. In the same seed, the good thing that have been shown is that if you train them on also them, that they keep the seed for many years. But sharing between household is common not only on Zanzibar, but also in some part in here in the Northern Zone. Uh, uh, farmers, when they harvest, they do also share with their ho a fellow household. And uh, based on some uh, previous survey that was done by Woodbridge, they have been sharing to up to three households. They are using the same source. And why we 
find this uh, seed uh, producers um, because they are multiplying the seeds is because some of farmers, they are lazy. They don't keep seeds, but later they'll come to buy. So we thought about that. The producer and Unguja and Pemba, their work is to produce seed and sell it to others. But they don't sell on the market. They are selling between themselves. You go and you buy. Under supervision of the government regulatory uh, organization, in our case in Zanzibar, is Zari. And before that, because in Zanzibar, we don't have a formal regulatory organization for seed quality. We, in, we went in Zanzibar together with Toski, uh, Tanzania Seed Certification Institute, Toski, and we built the capacity of Zari, and they went in the field visiting farmers and check their place where they are producing the seed, if they comply with the standard, the seed quality standard. So after giving the capacity to this Zali staff, then the Zali staff, staff took the duty to help these farmers. So now they are producing the, these uh, seeds under the supervision of Zali staff. So in that case, is, uh, this producer will be as a backup. If a uh, fellow farmers will not save the seeds, they can get to the fellow farmers who are producing seeds. Okay. Okay. Uh... Thank you very much. I think we are three minutes uh, above. So I would like to thank uh, everyone who has uh, participated uh, this afternoon. I also want to thank our presenters who gave such a good presentation on what ADI is doing in Zambia and also in Tanzania. Please uh, join us again to the next uh, webinar will send out the, the link. And if you have any other questions or any know how to access these technologies, please feel free to, to send an email to any one of us. We'll be able to respond. And thank you very much for, for participating today. Thank you. And uh, goodbye.